All right, now we're going to go ahead and look at interval notations. An interval is any chunk or chunks of the number line. So let's start with our set builder notation. What this literally says is the set of x being any number such that x has to be greater than negative 6 and it has to be less than negative 2. So on a number line, what we would do is go ahead and put little unfilled circles where the limitations are, the, the delimiters, whatever you want to call them. So negative 6 on one side and positive 2 on another, and then we would draw a line and connect them. So x in this set can be any number between negative 6 and 2, but not including negative 6 and 2, right? Because it has to be greater than 1 and less than the other. And this is the interval notation for that. You'll notice that a regular parentheses means that you cannot use the negative 6, and the parentheses on the other side means you cannot use the 2, but you can use any value between those two. So let's do a different one. You'll notice this one has a less than or equal to in it. That's what's going to be different about this problem. So this is the set of x is any number such that it has to be bigger than negative 1 and less than or equal to 5. Again, on a number line, we would put little circles by the delimiters. So negative 1, 5. But we can use the number 5 this time, right? Because x is less than or equal to 5. So we would fill in the circle over the 5. And again, draw a line between the two. And x can be any number between, that, between these two numbers, including 5, but not negative 1. And the interval notation on that would look like this. You'll notice the different bracket here on the end. The right-hand side next to the 5, it's a bracket. What that literally means is you can use the 5. Okay, so the 5 is in that set. Let's do a couple more. The set of x such that x is less than or equal to 3. Again, that less than or equal to should tell you right off the bat that you're going to be putting a bracket in there somewhere. There's the bracket. And you'll notice that the negative infinity sign, right? Because x has to be less or less than or equal to 3. It could be 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 5, negative million, negative anything. So that's, that's the negative infinity all the way out to the side. And a quick hint here is any infinity, you will always use a parenthesis because the infinity is not a number, it's a concept. So whenever you see an infinity, put a parenthesis there. So here's an example of the set of x such that x is less than 3. It's not less than or equal to. It's just less than. So it's going to change the bracket to a parenthesis. Okay, so let's just do one more. The set of x such that x is greater than or equal to 4. Again, the greater than or equal to should trigger the fact that you're going to use a bracket. Yes, right. So a bracket... 4 comma infinity, right? Because x has to be bigger than 4. It can be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a million, billion. Okay? And again, an infinity always uses a parenthesis. And here's what the interval notation would look like for this set if it was just x is greater than 4. Okay? Again, we switch back to the parentheses. So in a review, in a nutshell here, if you're dealing with a less than or greater than symbol only, you're going to use parentheses. If it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you're going to use the brackets. The bra or the parentheses mean do not include the numbers, whatever it's by, okay? And the brackets means that you do include the numbers it's by. And whenever you're dealing with any of the infinities, and yes, there's more than one infinity, always use the parentheses. So when you have a interval notation like that, you're literally talking about the set of real numbers. That's it. MGZ. Afuera.